Hey, Sob fans, it is great to see you again. Welcome back for another episode of Sob Talk Live, uh, the weekly webcast, well, almost weekly webcast for Sob fans all around the world. I am glad you're here. I suspect if, like me, summer is your driving season, you have a lot of miles to put on your Sob this summer, and uh, I kind of hope that you don't wind up like this. Yes, that's my car on the back of a trailer suffering uh, defeat on a, a small trip, not too far from home, thank goodness. So, um, at least it wasn't a huge problem getting towed back to home. But, you know, with so many of us heading out to Sturgis for the Saab Owners Convention in just a little over a month or so, uh, you know, that's maybe on your mind. You're going to drive your old car or 20, 30-year-old car that far. What are you going to do to be ready? What are you going to put in the trunk? And then if you're on the road and disaster strikes, what resources are available? We're going to get live with Jim Hickstein from the uh, Saab Club of North America, the treasurer there, talk a little bit about some of the resources available, some of his experiences, and really the program is all about you tonight. So we're going to invite you to participate and tell us what are you putting in the trunk, and then what are some tricks of the trade that you can share with us to help make sure those long road trips are successful. I uh, want to welcome to uh, this the uh, Classic 900 group, a young man who you've met on the program before, Jacob Pretzman. He uh, just recently, he's the guy who's behind the uh, auto autopsy Saab channel. He just picked up a Saab 900. And uh, let me just run you a clip of his experience getting that thing started and running for the first time. I turned the key a couple times and it started to crank. So I don't think the car is going to start, but just in case it does. Oh, oh, it died. Honestly, I didn't even check the fluids because my initial plan was just to come out here, unhook the battery like I said, and then I just wanted to start it. According to this, it's also doing 60 miles an hour and it says I have no gas, which I don't know if that's true or not. But yeah, I'm just gonna let it run for a minute or two and then probably shut it off. Okay, so one other thing I noticed, I'm about to shut it off, but uh, it's got a pretty severe oil leak. So I think what I'm gonna do is have a couple friends look at it that really know these cars well and give their opinions. And after that, I'll put in a parts order. Um, but there was an SPG that popped up at the junkyard. So we went ahead and got a lot of parts off that thing for this car. But again, future upload, you guys will see that here very soon. Well, actually he now is uh, driving that car and uh, well, not, driving it all the time, but it's running and it's had it on the road and he's thinking about converting it over to a five speed. It's an auto right now, of course. And uh, he's asked a question and maybe you guys can help. Maybe the hive mind here can help out. He's asking whether or not this is the right uh, component, the bracket. I don't know what you call this thing, but it's where the, uh, the stick shift goes in. And then obviously your ignition key there at the back of it. And, uh, is that what he needs for a conversion on his five speed or will it, uh, will it work? Can he pull over what's in his automatic? And you know, I did a, a conversion myself, auto to manual, and frankly, I just don't recall. So hopefully we'll be able to help him out and answer those questions tonight. Also tonight, I wanna give a special thanks out to our buddies at Tough Guard DIY, the sponsor of the broadcast this and every week. They have a special going on that, um, I want you to know about, and uh, so it's the Father's Day special. They're offering Tough Guard, the, the nano resin paint coating system, and a free bottle of Speed Guard. But let me let you in on a little secret. They've got that price to the rest of the world, the general public, $129.95. But hey, we can save you some money because here they are so supportive of the Saab community since really this is, this is where the product launch. If you go to catalog, and then jump down here and order just a regular Tough Guard application and then use the promo code SOB at checkout. The price drops by a hundred bucks. So the Tough Guard is $99. And then you go over and order a little Speed Guard at $18.49. And even with the Father's Day special, you're saving money, right? So you're saving 10 bucks if you do it that way, just because you guys know the promo code SOB. Um, Tough Guard was uh, introduced 
really here to the Saab community, and uh, they're really a supportive of all of us and wanted to give you that special deal. They're saying that you will always have the best promo code anywhere. So toughcardiy.com and uh, stuff goes on your car, seals your paint for up to five years. Great protection so far. I'm loving the product. All right, so that takes care of all the business. Let's jump out to Jim Hickstein and get back with him. Jim, how you doing, my friend? Good, good. Welcome back to the program. You are the treasurer of the uh, Saab Club of North America. And uh, so first up, I just want to- right here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's ready to write it. Uh, let's take a look at something here. I want to bring up the fact that uh, you've had tremendous registrations for the Saab Owners Convention coming up in yes. just a short little while, right? We opened uh, three months early this year in January 1. Surprise everybody, surprise me. And uh, the, the number, the graph, the line on the upper left there is this year, and you compare it to every past year. Uh, we haven't always pre-sold day passes or different levels of registration <clears throat> and other reasons, but yes, the turnout has been very gratifying uh, so far. And uh, last year in Albany, we budgeted for 350 people and 650 showed up. So uh, we, <laughs> we know that we're going to fill up the venue this time. Uh, if you haven't registered yet, I beg you to do it. You don't say, I, I'm going to go to SOC. Yeah, I'm going to go to SOC. If you're not registered now, you might not get to go because the show field sold out a month ago. The dinners sold out and then unsold out. We had to add more room for the Saturday banquet. But we're going to have to sell out again be between now and when the event happens on July 21. So do not wait. Get it in now and get a hotel somewhere. Yeah, I Airbnb just, is very popular. I just booked uh, the last couple of rooms available. I was told at the Deadwood. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, and, and so I'm I'm on the street for the last night if I don't uh, find something <laughs> somewhere. But I'm sure we'll be taken yeah. care of. So all you can those, just go to five classic 900s. I'm sure you can camp in the back of one. Of them. Yeah, that's true. Somebody will let me throw up the hatch. Uh, you can just go to sobclub.com and then go to convention, and that is where you will find all the information you need. And something else that's there that I think a lot of people, and this kind of brings us to the theme of the program tonight, and that is uh, there's a lot of resources there to help you if you run into trouble on the road. Jim, I've got to drop off here just a second, and I'll be with you, but I'm just going to go off camera and let you tell us about uh, some of the resources on this site and how you can help yourself if you run into trouble. Right. Okay, well, let's see which, which tab he brings up first. There's a bunch of stuff. Sobclub.com is the main key to it. And if you go look at our website, you can see, uh, well, this is their Sob parts. There's Sob. I recognize our logo on the next tab. They got it. There we are. <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> if, you, if, you, uh, if you were to scroll up, you'd see the top-level menu called Resources. And one of the links takes you to this page, which is our service directory. Um, this overlays the, the Saab ARIO official service center map location list with a bunch of independents that we have verified. And there's actually a third color in there, the green ones, green for money, um, will give members of ours a discount. So you wanna be a member of the Saab Club of North America before you start on your trip, uh, if you're going past the green <laughs> pin on the map. Um, but this, you know, there are there are areas where they are few and far between, but there's, you're probably not far from at least an independent um, if you look at that map. Great. And the other one that we just pulled up here was the Oreo map. So this goes a little bit deeper than Oreo. Uh, and uh, so these are the same same concept. So you can drop in on one of these yep. and uh, th there's a if you run into trouble, um, there is some little bit of help for you there. Mm hmm. There's okay. uh, there's a bunch more stuff. Which are, which other ones did you want to talk about? And I think you had whiz well, the, and manuals yeah, and exactly. Okay. Uh, let me jump over there. So uh, we talked about the service centers. Uh, this tell me what I'm looking at here. This is a list of uh, somebody uh, other than me scanned in all the official Saab service manuals. They look if you've seen them in person, they look kind of like this on the cover. Oh, this let me get your shot up there. You are. <clears throat> and um, there we go. Eh, this one's this one was at 9,000. I personally did the same thing with the 9,000s before I realized that anybody else did the 900s. I asked Jeff Gornflow if I'd get in trouble. He said, no, go ahead. Somebody else did it. So you can get this. I mean, the scans are online on the internet, freely available to anybody for the official Saab service manuals for the Classic 900 and the 9,000, um, which are the ones you need on, quote, unquote, on paper. 
after that, they started producing all the service manuals on computer for the service for the shops that they sold them to. Um, I, they sold them directly to customers. I bought a, a whole shelf full of 900 books when I bought my first car, but I don't think everybody did that. So the, the replacement for the paper manuals for the later models was called the Workshop Information System, WIS. And you'll hear this term a lot. SaabWISonline.com is has all that stuff and the Saab Club in North America runs that as well. There was another fellow who actually got it going in the first place and we bought it from him um, to make sure it stays available for our members and for the community. You don't have to be a member to use it. Great resources and that all starts at SaabClub.com, right? Uh, yep. Now, if you are, if you are like um, one of those guys who is just want to be prepared for anything, then years let me just show you this. This is uh, our friend Noel Simmons. That's his 900 right there. And in that box uh, is huh, in that box is everything that he takes with him on a road trip. I have multiple layers going on here, Jim. Let me fix that. And uh, so he the just, <laughs> yeah, he just sent me uh, these pictures. So we're a little bit, there we go. So, uh, amazing wow. all the stuff that he packs in so uh, i can't get your super off the screen right now i'm going to stop messing with that and focus on what's here so if you walk through all of this stuff this all fits in that pelican box so he's right. got clutch components there's a clutch disc he's got a fuel pump he's got a spare turbo all the relays, uh, relays. Everybody's got uh, a bag yeah exactly he's got a million different things uh, wow. and so he freely admits that uh, he might be a little bit over the top on OCD about all of this. But uh, well, does he have a story behind every one of these that has a tow truck involved, or, or is he doing some of it on <laughs> no. spec? Because everybody I know who drives Sobs any great distance has a story sooner or later. Um, and the adventures aren't the problem, it's the misadventures. Um, so I got ahead of a couple of them, but I have my own story. So I won't bore you with too many. We'll see how many people let me, let me tell. Well, please do. I'd love to have you move ahead with that, and uh, let's okay. Let's go. Well, the Saab that I owned for the longest, I bought a brand new 2002 93SE five door, sun green. I love the car. I drove it for 13 years. <coughs> I drove it all over, all over, and let my mother drive it all over. That was a mistake. She has a curse. Every time I let my mother drive the Saab, something bad happens to it. Usually a thousand miles from home. So I learned the Trionic Seven. This is the engine computer in in the mm -hmm. that generation of car has uh, three critical failures that will die without warning and strand you uh, that are that are if not unique to that car at least not true on every car there are five of them but two of them are the fuel pump and the alternator and that can happen to anybody so you can't blame Saab for that but the three are the throttle body the di cassette the direct ignition cassette the ignition coils and the crankshaft position sensor mm -hmm. The alternator, I, I define critical failures uh, as in three categories. Category three is the car doesn't start, usually when you just buy ice cream at the grocery store. Category two is it fails while underway, which is worse, right? And category one is fails while underway and damages something. Fortunately, I don't have too many of those. I got a lot of category threes and a few category twos, and TB, DI, CPS, throttle body, uh, 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 fuel pump alternator. I've had every single one of those on that generation of car sooner or later in 13 years. So I would not leave the house um, if my crankshaft position sensor and throttle body weren't less than 10 years old. Ah. Um, if you're going to spare, you want a new CPS, Bosch only, OEM only, a used alternator, a used throttle body you could get, and a used DI um, wouldn't, would probably work. Fuel pump, I would buy new and, and bring on a long trip, but I just install it in the car and then not worry about it for five or 10 years. You know? yeah. Don't wait. But the thing is the parts are key. Anybody can put a part in your car, even mm -hmm. if you have nothing but your hands, but if they don't have the part, they can't help you. Yeah. And they're not, and some of these parts are not terribly expensive. You know, we were looking yeah. around here, for example, uh, and found, you know, I, I don't know specifically which one this is, but you know, Here's a, a Euro parts, you know, OEM crankshaft position sensor for 200 bucks. I'm sure you can get them less elsewhere, potentially of lesser quality. But well, uh, but be careful. Like I say, some of them sometimes it's a it's a false economy. So you have to check with the, the knowledgeable yeah. people and ask. Absolutely. 
So yeah, but you can order these things and you still have time if you're going to go to SOC to find these critical elements and uh, get them in the boot so you've got them with you when the worst happens. If you're lucky, it'll happen to you while you're there because that's where half of the parts come from. <laughs> Esobparts.com is co-located with the museum. Donates part of their proceeds to the museum, so that's a that's a good place to buy them too. Absolutely. Now, I, although will call, they're not set up for will call. I, I threw them for a loop last time I was out there and said, "Hey, can I? Can you find me a B two eight four fuel pressure sensor?" And uh, boom, here here it is. So you consider an alternator something that you just want to have along as well? You said. Well, or or not twenty five years old. I mean, they they, mm -hmm. they don't last forever. Relays don't last forever. Nobody said they would. Alternators are comparatively inexpensive, but the core charge can be significant. So they, they expect you to wait until the alternator dies and then send it, you know, and then buy another one, put it in the car and send the old one back. Meanwhile, you, you're walking for three days or a week, right? While the things come to you. So certainly if you have more than one sob or more than one of a particular kind of sob, it wouldn't be at the top of my list, but I would spare an alternator for a flea. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. I had one of them die in my driveway, but all the rest of them were at least 300 miles from home on a Sunday. <laughs> and you know what? Uh, if you're a classic 900 guy, there is that little wire that attaches uh, the alternator uh, to ground, and uh, your alternator might be working just fine, but if that's not mm -hmm. attached, you're not going to charge. And so there's some little tricks of the trade like that. It's good to know. Yeah. You also, uh, how you, do you have an idea of what you feel safe about with the fuel pump? I mean, I haven't changed mine. I have no idea how old it is. Before you hit the road, how old do you want a fuel pump to be? Well, my, my own history on the C900, the first sob I bought was an 87 900, and it ran out of fuel with half a tank of gas. That, that model happens to have a feed pump that way down in the bottom sump, and then it pumps up to the main pump, which pumps the fuel. And if the feed pump dies, it'll run fine until the main pump is, you know, until the level goes below the main pump. So they, uh, they told me at the time, I said, are you playing the game of how far will it go with your car? I said, well, yeah, I have a 150 mile commute. I play that game every day. Um, so they said, don't do that. Uh, it's bad for the fuel pump. Well, who knew? They don't put this in the owner's manual. The fuel is the coolant for the fuel pump. So if you've owned the car since inception and you never let it get below half a tank, it'll go, uh, it'll go for 50 years. But if none of those, if some of those things aren't true, you bought the C900 from a garage yesterday, or you, you know, you've been driving it for 15 years and it seems fine, but you don't know the provenance of the fuel pump, I would at least spare one and bring it on long trips. Um, and then mm -hmm. the core charge is such that you might as well put it in the car and send the core back and be done with it for 10 or 15, 10, five or 10 years, let's say. Maybe yeah. longer. Good plan. Uh, I, I think that one of the key things to know about getting to Sturgis and really any SOC is that if you ask around and here on the Facebook groups, great place to go. Uh, you'll find somebody who's, who's rolling that way with you and you can convoy and there's, uh, there's strength in numbers, right? Uh, yeah. They may have the part you don't have. They may have the knowledge you don't have. They may have the phone number of the guy who's got both that you don't have. Right. All Anybody who's got Al Huseman's phone number, you want to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, so, you know there, are, there are legendary people in South Community who've been working on them professionally for a generation and can tell you, you know, it's that. Um, I, I got a car out of Meyer Garage in Iowa, one of my favorite shops, and I went on the way home, and it was idling really high. I wouldn't idle below 2,000. And I called him from Hardy's. I said, Marty, what's wrong with my car? I don't want to. He says, so it's a gross vacuum leak. I mean, it was 100 milliseconds to diagnose over the phone. They don't all work, but there is a lot of knowledge out there. Yeah, it sure is. And, you know, and that's one of the points that Noel is making. One of the reasons that he's uh, got that ridiculous stash of parts is he can help anybody, right? If, uh, and, right. and I think a lot of sub guys are that way. If they can, they will. And that's one of the great things about this community. Yeah. If I didn't have the convention taking literally every cubic centimeter of the back of my car, I broke a spring in my Vigan last year from hauling 2,000 pounds of paper all the way. But I, when I went to Lexington in 2015, I threw in all kinds of tools and said, well, I might need this, I might need this, I might need this. I kind of went overboard. But I should have started with, what can't you get at Napa? What do they not have mm. at your local mm -hmm. shop? And so I started mm -hmm. grabbing special tools and I wound up with the fuel pump tool. It's this Y-shaped thing <laughs> that goes around and will pull, will 
spin the ring that holds the fuel pump down and you need this tool. So I threw it in the car and I didn't need it, but somebody next to me did. So yeah, I, I loaned out all of my tools and most of my spare part, well, all, all the spare parts that weekend uh, without even needing them myself. That was kind of fun. Uh, I, I have finally figured out what's going on here with, uh, I'm not able to get the messages on screen. So um, guys keep sending, I'll find them and, and we'll share them as they come along. Something okay. else I wanna share though is, um, this beautiful animal. Uh, tell us about this one. I think we, we may have shared this one the last time that you were on, but it's such a beautiful yeah. car. I want, tell me more about this. Well, you know, you shouldn't buy a puppy from a breeder, right? You should get a rescue. So this was a rescue. <laughs> There's no breeder anymore. You can't find any stuff. But um, I always wanted a vegan. Uh, when I bought that new green sun green car in 02, I should have bought the vegan. Couldn't afford it, frankly. Um, and I would, I would have been a little self-conscious driving a red car. But many years later, uh, the Vigan finally came within my price range. This one was completely clapped out in New York. And so I, I flew to New York and got in it and expected to drive it home. I flew on a Friday afternoon, expected to drive it home by the weekend, be back at my desk on Monday. What could possibly go wrong? What could go wrong? Well, I was back at my desk on Monday, but it was, there were plenty of adventures. It died halfway across. The limp home, the throttle body went and tripped the limp home solenoid. And I didn't know anything about that. The what? I didn't prepare. Even if I knew about it, I couldn't have prepared very well. I don't know if they would give you a 10 millimeter socket on an airplane coming out of right. Queens, New York. So had I known more, I could have at least limped it to the next interchange. Um, or limped it to Joe Reichert's house in Milwaukee. The same car did that <laughs> another occasion before I finally figured out what the problem was and fixed it. So once I started learning more about it, oh, throttle bodies have limp home and here's what happens. And it's, here's, it's easy if you are prepared by the side of the road to fix it and keep going. Um, so as I learned more about it, I kept fixing more stuff. And well, it's just, you know, quite an old car by that time, it's 15 year old car, it needed suspension was completely shot from living in new york i thought i was going to die driving across pennsylvania one of the tie rod ends was completely gone um, so i just started fixing things and fixing things and fixing more things and then it wasn't good enough and i fixed some more stuff and i eventually rebuilt the engine because it was burning too much oil <laughs> it had a couple of bent rods so it wasn't completely insane yeah um and then the paint was you know acceptable after a good investment. It went from a 20 foot car to a five foot car, but that wasn't good enough. And I finally took it to my favorite guy in Iowa who did a fantastic paint job. And now it's too nice to drive. So <laughs> I worked myself out of a car. Merely owning it is not good enough for me. So I, it's for sale. If anybody wants the only brand new Vigan or the closest thing you can get to a brand new Vigan in the world, um, this is it. There's nothing Nothing original about this car except the transmission and most of the body shell under the paint. It is beautiful. It is lovely. That one with the little red circle on it? Scroll up again. There was a debate. Should that circle be body color or black? You know, this is this, the kind of the level of detail. The little towing that, port here? Uh, no, on the right. No, well, well, on oh, the this. left, that's a part you can't get. The uh, The towing eye cover is NLA, not no longer available. But yeah, that little thing is the bracket that holds the outside air temperature sensor. And I, mm -hmm. I can't show off by rattling off the part number offhand. Um, but yes, there was a, a scholarly debate among the people who care about this, the concourse people. Should that be body color or did I err in making it that? <laughs> Should it have been black from the factory? Nobody could come up with a photograph to prove their point. So that was, I, I like it red. <laughs> <laughs> it's staying that way. The next owner can paint it black. If it yeah, is. you can't go wrong with red, right? right. Uh, so, you know, one of the things that I took a look at is if you're out on the road and the worst happens and you have to go through a tow, everybody thinks AAA, right? Well, maybe, maybe not. Mm -hmm. um, because there are, I understand clubs are regional, so you might have a membership that works in some areas and doesn't work in others. And so I went well, out and, go ahead. I was talking to you about AAA because the clubs differ, but you, they will work everywhere in the country that they, at least I've tried, but you, you have to be a member of one or another and the services those clubs offer vary. So I think they will reimburse wherever it happens. You know, I'm not limited to Minnesota and Iowa and 
I hope the people of the city of Minneapolis isn't limited to Minneapolis. There's a separate club there. But yeah, so they were nationwide coverage, but it's complicated. Yeah. So I went on to just a one of those consumer advice kind of sites. I think it was Nerd Wallet or something like that. And they were do, offering a ranking of the towing services. Mm. And according to these guys, let me find it, let me find it. I had it here. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Um, they were saying that good. Now see the build up and now I've dropped the ball. Let me find it. <laughs> I wonder if they have the attribute that says, can I demand a flatbed because my car is lowered? That's important to <laughs> yeah. people. You know, if you buy my vegan, you'll need a flatbed if it ever goes. Ah, uh, there it is. Sorry. It took me a while to find this. Um, Good Sam, according to this little consumer site that did the analysis, they're mm. saying Good Sam has the best towing package. And okay. I haven't delved, delved into it too deep, but it says here, 100% of towing fees to the nearest service center, no matter if it's five or 500 miles away. So, hmm, good question. There is, what's a service center, right? Uh, who gets to decide? Well, they do, of course. They read the, and they think 500 is a long way. My my red vegan made it halfway home from New York before it, the throttle body went to limp. I towed it the rest of the way myself, 650 miles. Yeah. Not before getting a quote from a towing outfit. It would have been astronomical. Well, it's so fascinating, this this uh, whole idea of are you going to take a, a car that's as old as ours on the road and feel safe about it? And, uh, you know, my answer is why not? What's the worst that could happen? Well, I think we're talking about what the worst that could happen is. Well, um, somebody's going to scream because we never mentioned fire extinguisher. I probably should put oh, a fire extinguisher. I have one. I drove my 9000 to Carlisle last year and back, and it, it never missed a beat. That's a mm -hmm. B234, different animal. Um, you know, less to go wrong on Trionic 5. It's not even Trionic 5. I have the T, or do I have a T7 BPC? Is that a T5 BPC upgrade on a, on a, Older cars at a T7 BPC on a T5. Anyway, that's the most reliable car I've ever owned is my car 9000. If you don't count back feeding one of the headlights because a taillight bulb burned out. But, you know, if you can drive it home and fix it there, that's a success. That is. If I a agree. light comes on, that's a success. Die by the side of the road to be avoided. Well, I'm trying to check uh, messages here. And uh, Andy Arrow is saying he carries... Uh, a main and feed pumps in the trunk with him all the time. That's a good thing. Okay. See that half, there. Yeah, half trunk full of spares. Yeah, and no kidding. He's saying here, all respect to Al Huseman. Boy, you know what? So many. I wish I could get Al to come on the program. So many people talk about. I've met him, and he helped me out. Uh, and well, uh, yeah. So Al, if, if you're if out was, there, sometime was, join us. Yeah, if he was that knowledgeable and and helpful and everything else, and willing to stand in front of a camera that would make him Superman. So that, you know, most of the good sob techs are kind of all out grouchy, let's say. <laughs> you just have to take the rough with the smooth. I'm not saying Al's grouchy, but you may never get in front of a camera, but it's good to know his name. So uh, actually considering maybe making it to Sturgis with my C900 convertible um, as JS. So, well, you never know. Let's, let's see. Yeah, there's a graph I won't show you, which is the how many cars are in which category, in which competition already registered. So if you have inside information, you might walk into a first place award, but um, I can't give you that information. No, that's, yeah, you're an officer. <laughs> over, over 100 cars on the show field, and, and it's about 90, 90 10 uh, piece, people's choice in concourse. So we have fewer categories in Congress this year. We don't want everybody to get first place. Um, yeah, well, but that that's that's sold out. Sponsors are begging me. They're begging. Sponsors are begging. Well, are they opening their checkbooks to the club? What one? Of, well, they already did. You have to write. You have to open your checkbook to be a sponsor, and we thank them very much for their support. But yeah, one of them said, "Can I can I put another car in concourse?" The answer was, mm, "No," uh, or at least not until all the other sponsors have got their first car in a competition. So I'm I'm holding. Frankly, I'm holding a few car spots for sponsors who haven't finished signing up yet. If you're listening and you're one of them, please get on the program or we'll have to disappoint you. Well, uh, I think it's time for us to bring this to a close. Jim, thank you so much for joining me here. I hope we helped. Uh, just, I think people need to think about it and plan and know that there are lots of great resources out there. Sobclub.com uh, has great content 
And I think you, you play a big role in making sure all that happens. That's fantastic. So happy to support you and shout that out. Okay. All right, my friend. Uh, we'll see you. I'm sure I'll see you in Sturgis as long I'll as I make sure. it. You bet. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. Well, uh, I do hope uh, you guys will make the trip and uh, look forward to seeing you there. Also, I uh, do hope that you will give a look to Tough Guard DIY, our sponsor for this evening and every evening. And once again, just a quick reminder, um, the Tough Guard program for Saab with the Saab promo code gives you 100 bucks off. That is, they insist, they're saying this is always going to be the best deal that they offer to anybody. It's going to be offered to the Saab club. So I wanted to just thank them for being part of the program, showing support. And the reason they're doing that is because you were the first place that uh, really stepped up and showed support. Uh, they, they made the product available to us here in the Saab community first. So again, if you want to go to toughguarddiy.com, you can find the product there. Use your promo code Saab, and you'll be able to order the Tough Guard Nano Resin Paint Protection System coming to you in time, in plenty of time, for you to show it off when you go to Sturgis. All right, guys, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week here on Sob Talk Live.